come back. So, before the break I was talking about the, the binomial model and we also discussed some examples of the binomial model for the valuation of European options and how it needs to be modified, needs to be amended in the context of valuation of European options. So, now having done that the binomial model works in a discrete framework. Uh, now, let us move on to the continuous version or the continuum version of this option pricing and we now intro I now introduce to you the Black Scholes model. The Black Scholes model is the cornerstone of contemporary evaluation uh, theory uh, of contingent claims. Um, in fact, uh, a huge uh, chunk of finance on finance theory uh, rests on three fundamental um, propositions or three fundamental works uh, in done by uh, Harold Markowitz in, in the context of uh, mean variance uh, opto uh, portfolio optimization, William Sharp who introduced the capital asset pricing model and then the Black Scholes model for option pricing for contingent claims valuation. Uh, so, let us now get into the Black Scholes model. Before I get into the Black Scholes model, a bit of assumptions, notation I am sorry. Now, if x is normally distributed, I write uh, because th there is some ambiguity among the literature on how we uh, represent uh, normal distribution. So, I have put it here for the sake of completeness. Uh, if x is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma square, we write it as n bracket mu comma sigma squared. If z is a standard normal variate, we write it as n comma 0 comma 1 because the standard normal uh, variable is a, uh, has a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Now, if z is a standard normal variate, in other words if it is distributed as a standard normal variate, then we define the cumulative distribution function capital phi of z as p capital Z is less than equal to Z. In other words, the random variable Z that is capital Z, the random variable Z is the cap is capital Z and small z is a particular value that the random variable Z can take. So, capital phi of small z represents the probability of capital Z that is the random variable Z taking values up to and including this small uh, the value small z and that is given by this expression which is given at the bottom of your slide in the green box. So, this is the notation that I will follow here phi z is the cumulative normal distribution please note this this is cumulative normal distribution is the distribution which represents the total probability of the random variable taking a particular value uh, taking a values up to a particular value taking values up to a particular value from the downside. So, that please note uh, this notation. Let us now go to the assumptions. Uh, we assume that the stock price follows the stochastic differential equation d s is equal to mu s t t plus sigma s t w t. d w t is remember d w t is the infinitesimal Brownian motion increment and mu and sigma are constant parameters mu is the mean return and sigma is the volatility. Uh, short selling of securities will full with full use of the proceeds is allowed. Short selling I explained uh, earlier it is the process of borrowing the securities and selling it in market at t equal to 0 in anticipation that at a future point in time the price would go down. Uh, you could buy the securities in the market and replenish it to the owner from whom you had borrowed the securities and sold them uh, in the first place at t equal to 0. So, that is called short selling, selling securities which are not owned by you by borrowing them. There are no transaction costs or taxes, in other words there is no market frictions, uh, then all securities are perfectly divisible uh, and securities form a continuum uh, in that sense uh, and they can be traded in, uh, in, in values of any real number. 
uh, uh, any positive real number of course. Uh, there are no dividends during the life of the derivative. This is an important assumption. Of course, the Black Scholes model can be modified to accommodate this assumption, but for the moment, the fundamental model assumes that there are no dividends during the life of the derivative. There is no riskless arbitrage arbit uh, opportunities. In other words, the market is efficient. So, um, if there is any arbitrage opening, it would be siphoned away immediately. Um, security trading is continuous and the risk free rate R is constant and is the same for all maturities. In other words, the yield curve is flat and R is continuous compounded. Please note this. So, we now start, uh, we now do the derivation of the Black Scholes partial differential equation. What is the data that we have? Let us start with that. Uh, the um, stock S follows the stochastic differential equation we, I mentioned just now. Um, it follows the stochastic differential equation given in the red box d s is equal to mu s t t plus sigma s t w t and remember d w t is the infinitesimal Brownian motion increment. We also have proved the Ito's lemma, Ito's lemma for the for the total derivative of a function uh, of a continuous at least twice differentiable function of and of a stochastic variable and maybe explicit dependence of time is also there. But the important thing is that there is a x is a stochastic uh, variable and um, following the stochastic differential equation d x is equal to a d t plus b d w t and if that is so and if g is a function of x and t then d g is given by the expression given in the green box here. Now, setting g equal to c x t c s t where c is the derivative uh, and the derivative is price or the derivative value is a function of the stock price and price of the underlying asset and may have explicit dependence of time. I have discussed that issue and x is equal to s in this case, uh, a is equal to mu of s and mu into s I am sorry and b is equal to sigma into s and these values uh, you, uh, you can uh, obtain by comparing the equation in the red box by the expression that is given right below the green box. Mm, d s is equal to mu s t t plus sigma s t w t and d x is equal to a d t plus b d w t. Comparison of these two clearly gives us a is equal to mu s and b is equal to sigma s. Mm, we said g is equal to c s t and then we get from Ito's equation that is from the equation that is in the upper green box we get the equation d c is equal to the expression that is given in the lower green box here. So, this is this is the expression for the total derivative of the price of the derivative. Now, now recall that uh, when I started talking about the uh, pricing of options I emphasized very uh, strongly the fact that the pricing of options bases itself or the strategies for the pricing of financial derivatives bases itself on the presumption that we could create a riskless asset by taking a position in the derivative and a corresponding position in the underlying asset. That is precisely uh, that is precisely what happened when I talked about the binomial model when we constructed the uh, binomial hedge and that is precisely what is going to happen just now. What we do is we construct a portfolio capital pi which consists of one unit of the derivative C that is uh, that is our derivative we are we have uh, uh, symbolically represented the derivative by C. So, the portfolio that we have constructed consists of one unit of the derivative at minus d C by d s units of the stock minus d C by d s units of the stock. Uh, so, the value of the portfolio becomes C minus d C by d s into s where s is the instantaneous stock price and C is the instantaneous price of the derivative and d C by d s is the number of units of the stock that has incorporated in the portfolio pi. So, pi is equal to C minus d C by d s into s. Now, the change in value of the of the portfolio pi due to a small change d s in s in time d t 
would be given by d pi is equal to d c minus d c by d s into d s d c minus d c by d s into d s. Now, here we are making a very strong assumption. We are making the assumption that during this during this time period d t that we are considering uh, or due to this change in price the portfolio composition does not change that is d c by d s does not change. Uh, d c by d s remains constant during the small time period for which we are considering the change in the value of the portfolio. The composition between the, the portfolio that is one unit of the derivative and d c upon d s units of the stock this composition remains unaltered as a consequence or uh, even due to a change in the in the price of the underlying asset uh, we are making that strong assumption. And so, that being the case we get d pi is equal to d c minus d c by d s into s. So, next step d c now putting the values you see what we have here is d pi is equal to d c minus d c by d s into d s. We have got expressions for d c a with us we have got expressions for d s with us. Let us recap d c is given by the expression in the bottom red bo bottom green box here and d s is given by the expression that is given in the upper red box here. I repeat d c is given by the expression that is given in the bottom green box here and d s is given by the expression that is in the upper red box here. Now, putting these values here what we get d pi is equal to the whole thing simplifies out and what I get is d c d pi is equal to this expression on the right hand side in the red box uh, with a with a uh, post factor of d t. This is very interesting. This is very interesting for the simple reason that the this d pi now does not contain any term with d w here. The, the terms in d w are cancelled out are interse cancelled out between the d c term and the term involving d s. That is precisely what I mentioned in the beginning that the randomness in the derivative and the randomness in the underlying asset will annul each other. We construct the portfolio in such a way we construct the portfolio with such composition that the randomness in the derivative and the randomness in the underlying asset annul each other. Why this is possible? Because you can see clearly that both are being modeled by the same Brownian motion. The d w that is appearing in, 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 in d c is the same d w that is appearing in d s. So, the Brownian motion is same and therefore, we are able to by adjusting the coefficients of d w we are able to construct a portfolio such that the, uh, the outcome or the emerging portfolio uh, the change in value of the emerging portfolio is independent of d w. Now, what does it mean? Because the randomness is only there is modeled only by the d w term there is no other random term the only term that that incorporates randomness in our analysis is the Brownian motion term. Uh, in other words we are modeling the randomness purely by Brownian motion. So, because that Brownian motion term is missing here in d pi it means what? It means that this portfolio is not a risky portfolio because it has no randomness. The randomness that was initially there has been annulled has been removed by inter se adjustment through the portfolio and therefore, now we have a portfolio which has no randomness in other words which is risk free. No randomness means no risk, no risk means risk free and therefore, my portfolio pi is risk free and because my portfolio pi is risk free it will generate uh, uh, the risk free rate of return and that is precisely what we have done here in the green box d pi is equal to d 
1 upon pi d pi upon d t this is the re return this is equal to the risk free rate or d pi is equal to r pi d t. So, that being the case we have d pi is equal to r pi d t. Now, we have one expression for d pi which is given in the red box uh, d pi is equal to the expression that is at the right hand side in of the red box. The other expression for d pi we have from the expression in the green box and we also know that pi is equal to c minus d c by d s into s. So, we have d pi from here, d pi from here and we have pi equal to this. So, um, um, equating the two values of d pi and using pi is equal to c minus d s by d c by d s into s what we end up is equation number 9 which is the black scholes partial differential equation. So, equation number 9 is called the partial black scholes partial differential equation and um, it is it has revolutionized the uh, the valuation of contingent claims um, in finance theory. The boundary conditions in the case of a call option uh, European call are quite straightforward uh, C S T must be equal to maximum for S T minus K comma 0 and for a put option it has to be the other uh, other way around P S T comma K is equal to maximum K minus S T comma 0. These are the boundary conditions and the black hole solutions for calls and puts take the form c is equal to s naught and the, this is the value at t equal to 0 that is today c is equal to s naught phi d 1 minus k e to the power minus r t phi d 2 and correspondingly they have a value of the put where d 1 is given by this expression in the yellow box and d 2 is given by this expression in the green box. And these are solutions of the black scholes equations. Now, let us try to solve the Black Scholes equation. The Black Scholes equation that is uh, uh, that we have just worked out that we have just arrived at is given here in the red box. The boundary conditions uh, at t equal to capital T uh, C S T is equal to maximum S T minus K uh, 0 that is what we discussed. We are, we, are, we are solving this Black Scholes equation for a European call, please take note of this. We are solving this Black Scholes equation uh, for the case of the European call. So, that is why we are writing C as C, uh, uh, we are writing this as the um, boundary condition maximum S T minus K comma 0 at maturity of the option. If stock price is 0, then the call value will be 0 because the call value will be entirely out of the money and therefore, its value will be 0 and if stock price is infinity, the call will mimic the stock and therefore, the call price will also uh, um, correspond to the stock price. We make certain substitutions to first step. The first step is to make certain substitutions. What are those substitutions? Let us start with we make the dependent variable dimensionless, we make it dimensionless by expressing it in the units of the exercise price. In other words, we write C upon K is equal to F X tau where X tau will be defined later, but we ref instead of using C as the independent as its dependent variable henceforth we use F as the dependent variable henceforth where f is equal to c upon k. We write x is equal to log a s upon k. This enables us to remove the uh, remove the dependence of the uh, derivative uh, uh, of the coefficients of the derivatives on the independent variable. Uh, as you can see here that the coefficients of the derivative depend on s here. So, by, sub by making the substitution um, uh, x equal to log of s upon k, we are able to remove this dependence of the uh, of the coefficients uh, of the derivatives on the independent variables. Then we make the substitution given in the in the blue box, uh, which converts the final value problem to an initial value problem. And on making these substitutions, we get the expression 
we get the corresponding expression for the Black Scholes equation as the equation given in the yellow box here. Yeah, the boundary conditions take the form that are given below in the uh, below this expression in the yellow box uh, by making the substitutions that are made above. The second step is to transform this uh, uh, equation for f that is this equation in the yellow box here that we have. The tra we transform this equation to a diffusion equation uh, first order in t and second order in x. Now, uh, uh, first order in tau and second order in x. How do we do that? We make the substitution that is given in the red box here uh, where a and b are are uh, free variables which we can set uh, as per our requirements. Uh, when we when we substitute this expression for f in the equation that is given in the yellow box, we get the expression that is given in the blue box here. Um, clearly, uh, in order that the coefficients of d g upon d x and the and the uh, coefficient of g both vanish, we require that a is equal to 1 by 2 k minus 1 and b is equal to 1 by minus 1 by 4 k plus 1 whole squared. Uh, the, the, and the derivation is given here and we need to write a equal to minus 1 by 2 I am sorry a is equal to minus 1 by 2 k minus 1 and b is equal to minus 1 by 4 k plus 1 square in this equation in the red box and if we do that we are able to convert this equation into a diffusion equation for g uh, because the, the drift term and the term of containing only g both terms vanish and what we are left with is a first order term in tau and a second order term in x square uh, which is given at the right hand corner of the green box in the slide. So, the boundary conditions uh, take the form that are given in the slide. So, now we need to solve the diffusion equation that is given here subject to these boundary conditions. We solve, we solve this diffusion equation by the green function. Now, but before we do that we need to note that the function g is defined only for tau greater than 0. So, in order that this function is defined over the entire uh, real line, uh, we introduce the Heaviside step function and define g bar as in term by incorporating therein uh, with g the Heaviside uh, step function uh, as g bar is equal to theta uh, tau g uh, x comma tau. Um, where theta is the Heaviside function uh, which takes the value 0 for tau less than 0 and takes the value 1 for tau greater than or equal to 0. So, we then have the expression that is given at the bottom of, uh, of your uh, slide and this particular expression is derived on the next slide as you shall see here it is, uh, it is the expression is derived here on the slide and uh, please note the important thing here is that uh, the derivative of the Heaviside function is the delta function, direct delta function. So, when you differentiate it with respect to tau you get the delta function this is the first term in the second equation uh, and the rest of it is quite straightforward and uh, that gives us the expression uh, delta tau g x tau which can be simplified and written in the form of g g bar x 0 comma delta tau uh, keeping in view the property of the direct delta function. So, that being the case now the solution of this expression solution of this equation uh, is readily obtained from the green function and we have the solution as the expression given here in, in the second line in this uh, slide g bar x tau is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity dy g bar y 0 p x tau subject to y 0. Uh, now, what is p x tau sub, 
this expression P x tau subject to y 0 is nothing but the transition is the kernel and it is the represents the transition probabilities, transition probabilities of the happening of x at of the <coughs> variable y taking the value x at time tau given the value y at t equal to 0 and it satisfies p x tau the transition probabilities satisfies the condition satisfies the delta function condition given here in the slide in the uh, uh, in the second last line of the slide. This equation uh, is uh, the diffusion equation with the delta function uh, on the right hand side. In other words, the, uh, rep the p, uh, p represents the green function for the, the diffusion equation and therefore, p can be written in the form of this expression given at the bottom of the slide. Now, one word, a word about the boundary conditions. If you look at the boundary conditions, uh, the boundary conditions uh, are given here at tau equal to 0, g x 0 is equal to maximum of this expression within the round brackets and this maximum function limits the integration to positive y only. Why does it do so? You can see right at the bottom of this slide that if y is less than 0, then the uh, this whole expression, this whole expression becomes less than zero, and therefore the uh, uh, because it is pre, pre because it is we need to take the maxima of this expression, this expression in the round bracket, which is now less than zero for y less than zero and zero. So for y less than zero, the zero will um, will predominate. Will capture uh, this maximum function will capture the zero. Um, from the 2 and uh, therefore, for y less than 0, the contribution to the integral will be 0. So, this part um, needs to be taken care of and therefore, we can write the integral in the form that is given in the expression here on this slide. And uh, from this, we start doing uh, a lot of algebra. We, we set z is equal to y minus uh, x upon uh, under root 2 tau to introduce the standard normal variates because at the end of the day we need to represent the equation in term uh, represent the solution in terms of the standard normal variates and therefore we write z is equal to y, uh, y minus x upon under root 2 tau uh, which introduces the standard normal variate here the integration variable is also the standard normal variate uh, and after doing a lot of algebra here uh, as you can look at it, uh, there is a lot of algebra going on, but it is purely algebra, purely manipulation of algebra and what we end up with uh, at the end of the day what we find is the expression that is given at the bottom equation of your slide which can be simplified. There is one more step which can be simplified further and uh, written in the form uh, using d 1 and d 2 in this form, we can write them as the expression which is here on this slide as C s t is equal to s phi d 1 minus k uh, into e to the power minus r t minus t phi d 2. So, this is the expression that is this is the ultimate solution of the Black Scholes equation that we started with that we obtained uh, from the concept of a constructing a hedge portfolio and having done that having um, the solution is of course, very involved, but um, at the end of the day this is what we get from solving the equation and doing a lot of algebra. So, with this we complete the Black Scholes model. Uh, in a sense we complete the traditional approach to the Black Scholes model. Uh, now, we get into the path integral approach to option valuation. We have done the Black Scholes, uh, we have done the Black Scholes solution with uh, Black Scholes partial differential equation with, uh, we, we derived and we solved the Black Scholes partial differential equation using the green function approach. We now do it uh, solve the Black Scholes equation using the path integral approach. So, that is our next step. 
Now, we start with uh, the path independent case which is uh, 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 of which the, the European call uh, is a typical example because uh, the payoff from the uh, uh, European call uh, is dependent only on the on the stock price at maturity, it does not depend on how the stock price goes uh, reaches the maturity point. So, in that sense, uh, the the option value is independent of the path that the stock price takes or the underlying or the takes in um, uh, in reaching the maturity value. Um, and this is the simplest concept, and uh, we shall start with that in the next lecture. Uh, thank you.